Good day everyone. So our topic for today is about looking at the internet. So the internet is the biggest worldwide communication network of computers. The internet has millions of smaller domestic, academic, business, and government networks which together carry many different kinds of information. The short form of internet is the net and the World Wide Web is one of the biggest services it is used by billions of people all over the world. The internet has developed in the United States by the United States Advanced Research Projects Agency. The internet was first connected in October 1969 and was called ARPANET. The World Wide Web was created at CERN in Switzerland in 1990 by a British scientist named Tim Berners-Lee. Today, people can pay money to access the internet from internet service providers. Some services on the internet cost nothing to use and sometimes people who offer these free services use advertising to make money. Censorship and freedom of speech on the internet can be controversial. Before we start, I just want to lay down the lesson objectives. In this lesson, you will learn about the nature of the internet and about the rule and function of a web browser. Upon completion of this lesson, you should be able to describe the nature of the internet, describe packets and how they make their way across the internet, differentiate between public and private networks, specify a network location in Windows, describe the functions and characteristics of IP address, Understand the domain name systems or the DNS. Describe domain types. Identify parts of the URL. Differentiate the internet from the World Wide Web. Describe the role of HTML, CSS, and hyperlinks. Use a web browser. Describe different browsers. Work with browser settings. Describe browser functions and features. Use bookmarks and favorites. Handle pop-ups, cookies, and the browser's cache. Understand browser extensions and describe website web page standard. A connected community, as you have been making your way through this uh, presentation, hopefully you have noticed the repeated theme of connectedness. When personal computers were brand new, they were strictly standalone devices, but we knew that connecting computers could be useful, and so we created networks, and then on a grand scale, we created the internet. At one time, data, phone, and cellular networks were separate and distinct, but they are rapidly closing all the gaps and becoming one interconnected network. Our personal devices, phones, tablets, TVs, and PCs are connected from almost anywhere and our world is becoming a connected community. In this presentation, you will examine some of the technology that connect us and consider the advantages, pitfalls, and responsibilities that come with living in a connected world. Introducing the internet. You use the internet all the time, doing research, Play, playing games, watching videos, or chatting with friends. You type in an address or click a link in pages of text, color, images, and embedded audio and video files appear on the screen. Where does all the information came from? And how does it reach your computer? The information you view in your browser comes to your computer through a series of networks. The internet is a vast global network that functions in much the way or the same way as your school or company network. Hierarchically, the internet is comprised of many smaller networks which are connected together so that they can communicate and share information. At the core of the internet is the backbone. A series of redundant high-speed networks owned and operated by some of the largest long-distance voice carriers. So, for example, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, or CenturyLink. 
Companies that operate networks on that backbone are called Tier 1 providers. Tier 1 provider networks connect with one another at internet exchange points located along the backbone and high-speed backbone routers keep network traffic moving. Anyone who wants to access the internet must ultimately connect to a Tier 1 provider network. And typically, this connection is supplied by a local internet service providers such as a cable or DSL company. And these local ISPs negotiate with Tier 1 providers for internet access. Individual consumers and businesses subscribe to their local ISPs which turn are connected to Tier 1 providers. Hardware is a basically the internet is a location of hardware. It consists of wires, routers, switches, microwave links, servers, and communication protocols. The hardware you use is your home LAN or in school or office LAN is not much different than the hardware that forms the core of the internet itself. The packets. In any network, data that is exchanged from one computer to another travels across the network in a unit called a packet. A packet is a package information. It contains address information for both the source computing device, the one that sends the packet, and it is intended target or destination device. The addressing information is what makes it possible to deliver a packet from its source to its destination. In addition to addressing information, a packet also contains a data payload. This data payload is, a, is the actual information that you want to send from one device to another. So, for example, a data payload may contain a request for a web page. If a packet is coming back to your computer from a web server, the data payload may contain part of the web page that you requested. All data is sent over a network, images, document files, web pages, audio and video files must be broken down into packets before they can be transported across the network. The larger the file, the longer the process will take. Now, how about the router? When you open a browser, type a URL in the address bar and press enter, your computer breaks the request for a specific web page into packets and send those packets out onto the network. Your home, school or work router forwards those packets to your ISP. Who forwards them onto the internet? But how does your packet with a web page request travel across the internet to get to the target web server? Routers along the internet read the addressing information and forward your packet accordingly. That is, your data packet passes from router to router along the internet and passes through several interconnecting networks along the way until it reaches the network where the target web browser or web server resides. At the destination packet, destination packets are resembled in the original data transmission. A router connects different networks to each other. A router also determines the best path for a transmission to take and passes the transmission to the next router along the path. You may be familiar with residential broadband routers or even enterprise level routers used in the company or school land. Routers all perform the same functions. However, high-speed internet backbone router must be powerful enough to handle the enormous amounts of data streaming through the backbone at speeds of gigabytes per second. The public networks. Arguably, the most important things you should understand about the internet is that it is public network. In fact, it is often referred to as the public network. It is not centrally owned or controlled. It is available for anyone with a valid IP address and an internet connection to access and use. For this reason, no one can poli uh, police 
the internet to protect or control or monitor the people who use it. Think about all the people around the world who connect to the internet every day. Anytime you connect to the internet, you can potentially connect to anyone else who is connected. The great thing about the internet is that any computer can exchange data, email, and programs with any other computer. And the bad thing about the internet is that any computer can exchange data, email, and programs. And also, unfortunately, viruses, trojans, and malware with any other computer. Being connected can make any system vulnerable to unwanted activity such as eavesdropping or theft of personal information. For this reason, the internet is also referred as, uh, to as the open network or the untrusted network. In network diagrams, the internet is represented by a cloud because its contents are unknown. Private networks In contrast to the public, untrusted internet, private networks are considered secure. All systems connected to a private networks are trusted. When you log on to a system that is inside your home, school, or corporate LAN, you have access to the resources connected to the LAN. Depending on your rights and permissions, you can likely access printers, email servers, and documents stored on network file shares. One of the benefits of maintaining a LAN is the ability to share resources. Many organizations maintain intranet that allow their employees, partners, or students to access LAN resources from outside the LAN. An intranet is a private website. You, you access it with your browser and you must log in using a valid username and password. Once you are logged in, you can navigate the intranet website to access the LAN resources that have been made available. In our computing fundamentals, you learn that you can give or gain access to a LAN from the outside using a virtual private network connection. An intranet and VPN serve the same general functions. They allow access to the LAN from the outside for users with a valid username and password. Once you make a connection, your system is trusted just as if it were located physically within and connected directly to the LAN or local area networking. Specifying a network connection type. The issue of trust becomes a serious one the, the moment you attach a network cable or join a WLAN. Network administrators use firewalls to keep potentially dangerous traffic out of the LAN, but who protects your system when you are connected to a public network at a public spot, such as at a hotel or an airport or a coffee shop? The Windows operating systems include built-in mechanisms to help protect your system while you are connected to various networks. When you make a network connection for the first time, Windows asks what type of network you are connecting to. And of course, you can change the setting for a connection at any time. You can choose either private or public. If you configure a connection as public, then your computer will automatically discover that is locate and identify other computers, devices, and content that is accessible on the network. More importantly, it also makes your PC discoverable and allows sharing of folders on your system. And this is the appropriate setting for a connection to your work school network. The private. If you configure a connection as private, Windows will not allow your PC to be discoverable by other systems on the network. And sharing will be disabled. Use this setting for connections to private hotspot. The connection type is displayed in the network and sharing center page in the control panel. The connection type is tied to the discoverability of your PC which you access through the setting app. 
and to configure a network connection as private, click Start, Settings, then click Network and Internet. In the left pane, click either Wi-Fi or Internet as appropriate. Again, in the left pane, click either Wi-Fi or Ethernet to display the current active connections. Scroll down and click Advanced Options. Set the Make this PC discoverable setting on. Allow always choose the appropriate type of connection. So again, I will show you the way on how you'll be able to configure your network connection as private. Finding computers on the internet. In order to compute, uh, in order for computers connected to a network to communicate with one another, they need to know how to lo locate each other. That is why each computer connected to a network must have a unique address. The unique network address is called an IP address. When your computer breaks a message into packets and adds addressing information, that addressing information in an IP address. In IPv4, an IP address is represented by a grouping of four numbers, each between 0 and 255, separated by period or dots, and this type notation is called dotted quad notation. So, for example, we have here the 66.235.120.127 six is the IP address for the web server of at ask.com. Anytime you visit the ask.com website, your computer exchanges packets of information with the ask.com web server. Your computer uses the ask.com web server's IP address in order to properly address the packets that it sends to the servers. Once the address packets are sent out onto the internet, Routers guide the packets to the ask.com web server because return address information is included in the packets. The ask.com web server knows how to properly address the packets that it will return to your computer. Uh, have you ever typed an IP address into the address bar of your browser? Chances are you haven't. Most uh, people type a text-based website address into the browser address bar. Uh, for example, you can visit the ask.com website by typing www.ask.com in the browser address bar. Your computer can discover the IP address of the ask.com web server by querying a DNS server. The domain name system or the DNS is a service that keeps track of the specific IP addresses of web servers around the internet and maps those IP addresses to the text-based names we enter into the address bar of our browsers. The text-based names are called domain name. The domain name system resolves text-based domain names into their IP addresses. So for example, you can access the ask.com web server at IP address 66.235.120.127 by typing www.ask.com in your browser's address bar. In other words, 66.235.120.127 is equal to www.ask.com. Both the domain name and the IP address refer to the system Prepare to the same resource, but the domain name is easier to remember. Without DNS, you would, ne you would need to enter the IP address anytime you wanted to access a source on the internet. These mapping are stored in rec records in DNS database. Every domain consists of DNS records. A DNS record is an entry in the DNS database, and the network administrator will create one address record that maps the IP address to the domain name. And usually, 
create several records for aliases or nicknames that point back to the address record. If you enter an alias as a URL, for example, ask.com or simply ask, you can still navigate to the www.ask.com web server. The DNS servers, the DNS service is made possible through DNS name servers, which are servers on the internet whose sole function is to resolve domain names into the IP addresses. For example, when you enter a URL such as www.cciilearning.com into your browser's address bar, your computer contacts a domain name server to obtain the IP address related to this domain name. When your computer receives the IP address 160.153.73.246 from the domain name server, it can correctly address a web page request and send it to the web server. When the server responds, the CCI Learning Solution sites display on the screen. If a DNS server is unreachable, you will not be able to navigate to a website by entering its URL in the browser address bar. You can, however, still reach the site if you know its IP address. A typical domain name consists of the three labels separated by periods or dots. So, for example, www.worldcity.edu.ph O kaya, or www.ccilearning.com or www.yahoo.com The server name. www is the server name. Identifies the name of the web browser. The registered domain name identifies the organization, the, the organization that owns the domain name. Its domain name is unique and is registered with the Internet Corporation as assigned names and numbers or ICANN. Top level domain. It identifies the category of the registered domain name. Starting from the right, the domain name lists the most generally category, then more specifically the company that owns the domain, and then the specific resource within the company that owns the domain. The domain name is like a roadmap to a particular resource. So, DNS domain levels. DNS is arranged into a hierarchy that consists of three levels. We have the root level domain, top level domains, second level domains. The root level domain is the top of the hierarchy and contains entries for each top level domain. Top-level domains, generic categories in countries. Top-level domains are the highest-level domain names of the Internet. Every domain name ends with a top-level domain label. There are two main groups of top-level domains. Those that group domains into generic categories, commercial, educational, military, and government, and so on and country code top level domains which are based on two character codes signifying country abbreviation. The generic top level domains, you can uh, generally determine what type of information a website contains or what it is meant to do simply by reading the generic top level domain. The original seven generic top level domains are .com, .net, .edu, .gov, .int, .mil, and .org. So, we have here the definition of the right side. Additional categories are added as the need arises. Example includes aero, biz, .info, .jobs, .pro, and .travel. The country code top level domains. Other top level domain names use a two letter abbreviation 
and are meant to identify the country in which the website is hosted. So, example, AU for Australia and for the Philippines, that is .ph. The second level domain, a domain name registered by the company that owns it, Amazon.com, Microsoft.com, are example of second level domains. Categories of the top level domain, for example, .co.uk, indicates a commercial business within the United Kingdom while .police.uk is used by UK police forces. The subdomains. Additionally, second level domains can be further divided into subdomains. For example, in the following URL, support.xbox.com. .com is the top level domain. .xbox is the second level domain. And support is a subdomain within the Xbox second level domain. Understanding the URL. The text-based website address you type into a browser address bar is called a Uniform Resource Locator or URL. A URL is the global address of a resource on the World Wide Web, and a URL consists of two basic parts, a protocol identifier and a domain name. These parts are separated by a colon and two forward slashes. So, protocol identifier, for example, HTTP colon backslash backslash www.ccilearning.com The www.ccilearning.com is a domain name and the HTTP backslash uh, colon backslash backslash is a protocol identifier or forward slash. The protocol identifier, a various protocols are used on the internet to communicate with specific types of server. The protocol used to request web pages from a web server is Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. Web servers also use HTTP to send web pages to the computers that request them. Browsers assume that you want to use the HTTP protocol when you enter a website address. This allows you to simply type www.google.com instead of http colon backslash or forward slash www.yahoo.com or google.com. Some web browsers display the http colon forward slash protocol identifier in the address bar and others do not. There's more than http or http. Others protocol commonly used in URLs are HTTP Secure or HTTPS is a protocol used for secure web transactions such as making purchases over the internet. The HTTPS protocol allows you to use HTTP over a secure connection. In the past, the connection were secured by a protocol called Secure Sockets Layer. Today, Transport Layer Security is the protocol used to secure the connection. However, TLS Open still referred to as SSL and HTTPS is open still referred to us as HTTP over SSL. The file transfer protocol use the transfers uh, used to transfer large file or files between a user's computer and a, spe a special type of server called the FTP server. Then, if you want to use web server to access an FTP server to transfer a file, you must specify the FTP protocol in the URL. So, for example, FTP colon forward slash aeneas.mit.edu or FTP colon colon forward colon forward slash worldcity.graduateschool.edu The path and file name in URLs. Web server, likely one only PC, store file in directories on a hard drive. A URL can also include the path of a file name of a specific document or web page stored on a server. Consider the following URL. HTTP 
colon forward slash www.opera.com browser slash tutorials slash mail slash setup slash account setup. The hashtag account setup is a web page. Browser tutorials mail setup is the path to the folder of the web server where the page is stored. WW is the name of this web server. Opera.com is the registered domain name of the company that owns the web server. And .com indicates that it is a commercial enterprise. So again, this will be an example that I'll mention earlier. Okay? So the account setup, browser tutorial mail setup, www, opera.com, and .com. What is the World Wide Web? In our discussion on the, of the internet, we have made several references to the World Wide Web. Well, the internet is a network comprised of a hardware connection. The World Wide Web is a system of interlinked documents that are accessible on that network called the internet. There are countries, millions of documents hosted on a web server. And if you can access a document by typing its address to a web browser, or by clicking a link that takes you to it, that document is part of the World Wide Web. Documents hosted on web server are generally referred to as web pages, and web pages usually contain links called hyperlinks to other pages located on web server around the internet. If you have ever visited a website and click a link that took you to another website, then you have used a hyperlink. These hyperlinks form the connections that make the World Wide Web possible. Web pages around the world are connected to one another by hyperlink. What exactly is a web page? A web page is a file created with hypertext markup language or HTML. HTML is a special language that web page authors use to add text, hyperlinks, applications, video clips, sounds, and animation to web pages. A collection of related web pages is called a website. When a web pages are designed properly, visitors can point and click to launch applications, navigate to specific areas of the website, or visit related website all within a web browser window. An HTML, the commonly named for hypertext markup language, is a standardized language used to create web pages. The language is built using HTML elements which consists of tags in closed angle brackets as used in the Hello World HTML document as what we have here. So, doc type that HTML, HTML tag, then head tag, title tag, body, paragraph, and so on. Most HTML tags are written in pairs such as head and closing head, tag head. The first tag in the first is called the opening tag, and the second is the called the closing tag. Some tags called empty elements are not paired. Web browsers can read HTML files and render them into web pages. Browsers do not display the tags, but use them to determine how to represent the content of the page. You may have noticed from looking at the HTML example that the tags describe the structure of the page. And this is head sections, which can include styles or a web page title. And the body section that can include headings, bullet lists, and paragraphs of body text. When you view the Hello World document in the browser, it appears as shown in the figure stated at the lower right part. HTML also allows images and objects to be embedded in web pages and for pages to run scripts written in programming and scripting languages such as JavaScript, Python, Perl, and PHP. The CSS or Cascading Style Sheets Today is standard for a web page design separate content structure from presentation. The content and structure are defined in the HTML, presentation attributes that is properties such as font colors, background styles, element alignment, and so on, are defined in cascading style sheets. 
CSS allows web page authors to move presentationally styling information into the head section of the HTML document or to separate style sheet documents that is linked to the HTML document. The web browser uh, reads the HTML document for content and structure and looks at the style sheet for presentational information. The browser applies the style defines in the style sheet to the HTML content as it renders the page. The following uh, sample codes, the lower document with CSS paragraph style added to the head section. The opening and closing tags for the style are style opening tag and closing tag. When you view uh, the modified Hello World document in the browser, it appears as shown in the following figure. Notice that the browser applies the style and renders the page accordingly. Hyperlink. The World Wide Web is based on a collection of documents which are connected to one another through hyperlinks. You can click a hyperlink in a web page to move to another web page or to a particular section within the current page or current web page. A hyperlink is a reference to data that is located somewhere other than the present location. A hyperlink can point to a whole document or to a specific element within a document. Hyperlink are HTML uh, elements and are embedded into web pages. Generally, hyperlink consists of link text and a target. And HTML links define with A or anchor tag and take the following form as what we have here. The web browser or meet the browser. Web browsers are, all, are software applications that enable users to easily access, view, and navigate web pages on the internet. Browsers allow you to interact with websites and to experience the amazing rich media that is available on the World Wide Web. You may be familiar with several browsers such as Microsoft Edge, before internet, uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Apple Safari, Opera, and a lot more. Getting where you want to go, the address bar. So to visit a web page, you, in, you enter each URL into the browser address bar and press enter. The browser requests the page from the web server and when it is received, the browser displays the page within the browser window. The address bar displays the URL of the page uh, currently displayed in the browser window. If the web page includes a title, it is displayed in the window tab. And you can visit any web page, web page by typing its URL into the address bar and pre pressing enter. As you navigate to other pages, with a website, the URL, URL shown in the address field updates to show the address to the current page. And most browsers maintain a history of URLs that you can access from the address bar. Clicking a URL displayed in the address bar history list has the same effect as entering the URL directly into the address bar. In addition to displaying the URL, the, U, the address bar open includes several buttons. The Internet Explorer address bar is displayed at the bottom. The Internet Explorer address bar includes the following buttons. We have search, show address, security report, refresh and go, and stop. For the control buttons, of course, 
we have minimize, maximize, store down, and close. You can resize a browser window to any dimension as you would any other application window. Browser windows. Browser include navigation tools and features which make them easy to use. This include built-in navigation button, configurable setting, a home page, and various toolbars. So, of course, to create a new tab, click the new tab button or press Ctrl plus T. Or right-click the active tab and then click new tab. Or if the menu bar is displayed, click the file and then click new tab. In the most browser, when you open a new tab, the browser display thumbnails of the sites you visit most open and thumbnails of top sites and suggested site. So as I mentioned, this will be the process on how to create a tab use of the following methods. So, popular browsers, we have Microsoft Edge at present. Previously, that is Microsoft Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera, and Apple Safari. So, the back, forward, and refresh button. So, the back button moves back one page, forward button moves ahead one page, and the refresh button reloads or display a page. If a menu bar is available in the web browser, it can usually be displayed by pressing the Alt key. Settings. A browser includes numerous configurable settings that control not only its appearance but its behavior. So, for example, you can configure your browser to block particular types of content or to reject website cookies or to open multiple home pages each time you launch it. To set a home page on a Google Chrome, click Customize and Control Google Chrome, then click Settings. In the Appearance section, click the Show Home button, check box to enable the home page setting. Select Open this page. Then type the URL of the page you want to see to set as your home page and click OK. Uploading and downloading. The terms uploading and downloading refer to the process of sending information from your computer to a server that is uploading and the price of receiving information from a server that is downloading. When your browser loads the web page and this download elements are stored on your hard drive, is the special folder designed to hold temporarily internet files. So we have a file size and connection speed considerations, of course. We discussed it already during our uh, File management. So we have the file size and storage capacity are measured in bits and bytes, and per connection speed is measured by bits per second. The speed of your internet connection and the file size of the elements of the web page directly affect your browsing experience. While image files can be large, audio files can be larger, and video files can be positively huge. Understanding relative file size in your connection speed enables you to formulate a realistic estimate of how long downloading a particular file may take. So, as what we have here, the following table from the Apple support page compares estimated download times for downloading content from iTunes over 5 Mbps connection and at 1 Mbps connections. 
So, shown in our table. Before I forget, advantages of streaming. Uh, you learn that streaming is the process of having a file delivered to your device in a constant and steady stream. Although you cannot save stream content, you can see how streaming might be preferable to downloading when you want to watch high-definition movies and television shows. If you download the content, you may have to wait several hours before you can start viewing it. Whereas, if you stream the content, you can begin watching it immediately. Searching from the address bar. While there are several well-known search engine sites on the internet, many modern browsers include a search box in the address bar, which allow you to search for in information without first having to navigate to a search engine site. Just click in the address bar and start typing. If you enter a complete URL, you will go directly to the website. If you enter a search term or an com incomplete address, a list of suggested search term appears in a menu. And we have an example at the right side. Favorites and bookmarks. If you visit a site frequently, you can bookmark the site so that you can visit it without having to enter its URL. When your bookmark site, you have you you save the your site URLs in a folder created specifically for storing bookmarks. Various browsers give different names to their bookmark folders. Microsoft Edge and the Internet Explorer call bookmark sites favorites, while Google Chrome refers to them as bookmarks. In addition to storing this URL in a folder, you can add bookmark sites to a favorite bar or bookmarks bar which can be displayed in the main browser window. To access a bookmark site from a favorite bar or bookmarks bar, simply click the site name on the bar. Okay. Browser Preferences and Settings Handling Pop-Ups A pop-up is a small browser window that suddenly opens in front of the page you are viewing. Pop-ups contain common buttons or options that must be selected before you can continue with the current task. Pop-ups can remind a visitor to log on or to enter required information but they are also used extensively for advertising on the web. And many users find them annoying because they remain open until you click on options or manually close them. Pop-ups can be also used for phishing or for infecting a computer with malware if the user clicks on the pop-up. To eliminate the need of interacting with pop-ups, browsers include built-in pop-up blockers. In most browsers, the pop-up blocker is enabled by default and you can fine-tune the settings of the pop-up blocker. So important messages are followed to display. To access the, a pop-up blocker setting in Internet Explorer, click Tools, Internet Options. To open the Internet Options dialog box, then click the Privacy tab. In the pop-up blocker section, select or clear the Turn on pop-up blocker. Check box or click the Setting buttons to open the pop-up blocker setting dialog box. Notice that you can add website to, an, to the allowed website list. Pop-up blocking is not enforced on these sites. That is, pop-ups are allowed on the sites that you add to the list. You can also specify a blocking level of high, medium, or low. To access pop-up blocker settings in Google Chrome, click Customize in Control Google Chrome settings, then scroll down and click Show Advanced Settings. In the Privacy section, click Content Settings, then scroll down to the Pop-up section. You can select to allow all sites to show pop-ups or to not allow any sites to show pop-ups. You can also click Manage Exemption.
to create a pop-up exemption list. The cookies. Cookies are, uh, are small text files placed on your computer when you visit a website. Cookies are simple files that store information about your preferences. For example, a cookie might be used to store information about your actions, such as the options you click on the web page or which browsers used when you access the site. Cookies can improve your browsing experience by letting sites remember your preference by allowing you to avoid having to sign in each time you visit certain sites. There are various types of cookies including first party, third party, and session cookies. So, browsing history. The history folder stores the URLs of sites you have access within a defined period of time and provide a convenient way to revisit website, especially if you cannot remember the exact URL. Deleting your browser history or browsing history also helps protect your privacy, especially if you are using a shared or public PC. So, the private browsing session in Google Chrome take place on incognito tabs. Click Customize and Control Google Chrome, then click New Incognito Window. On a mobile device running the Chrome browser, click the Menu button, then click New Incognito tab. Extending Browser Functionality We have Plugin. It is the term to use when referring to third-party application that will work on most popular browsers, like Adobe Flash Player, Window Media Player, Microsoft Silver Light, and Real Networks Real Player are example of popular plugins. Add-on is the term to use that referring to browser-specific application that generally modify the browser interface. Google Toolbar Add-on is an example. An in-browser uh, in browser app is a web page type of browser extension. It is designed to extend the functionality of a browser by linking it to the web service. So, web standard, the first page you see when you access a website is the top level page called the home page or index page. The common element of the web page. Well designed website features the company logo on all the site pages, image videos, buttons, navigation bar, and menus. For the navigation bar, Similar to a table of contents for the site, it shows users is the site and provides a way to get them there. Breadcrumb or breadcrumb trail, a type of secondary navigation scheme that shows the user location in a website. We discussed already about the widget. Now, a small self-contained program that a web designer can add to a web page. Standard pages, of course, they have About Us, Privacy Policy, Plugin Page, and Online Store. So, this will be my references. The CCI Learning Solutions, Avanti M Basic Office Application, and Avanti M ICT Empowerment Office Application. So, before we're at, we end, in this lesson or in this video presentation, you learn about the nature of internet, about the role and functions of the web browser. So, thank you everyone. Good luck and enjoy the rest of the semester.